So Grizzle has the pleasure of sitting down and interviewing Mark Selby, the CEO of Canda Nickel. Mark, thank you so much for joining us. No, thanks for the opportunity. Now, nickel is being viewed as one of the key metals needed to achieve this energy transition. Can you help us walk us through, you know, what are the key drivers of this critical metal? Yeah, so, so nickel, the reason it's so important is fundamentally, it's the metal that gives the batteries the highest energy density necessary. And what energy, you know, translates to an average consumer is range. That's the thing that allows, if you're gonna have a big pickup truck and you wanna have a long range uh, battery, then you're gonna need, need a lot of nickel in that battery. So the battery company's been figuring out ways how to get as much nickel into the batteries as possible so that you know the big North American cars and trucks that we like to drive uh, can, can become electric. And you highlighted some very specific risks in your technical presentation at PDAC. Can you walk us through those in terms of supply, risks in terms of supply? Yeah, so so one of the things that I think you know the average investor really doesn't understand is, is two things. One, you know, uh, in Canada, we think of nickel as Sudbury, but you know Sudbury shrunk to being a very tiny percentage of global supply. Most of the, oh, more than 100% of the wor uh, world supply growth has come from Indonesia and basically mining operations that have been established by uh, Chinese companies. And there's two big issues with it. One is, in terms of carbon footprint, uh, those deposits are basically taking a ton of soggy dirt uh, that has about 1% nickel in it and using a huge amount of electricity and then another big chunk of coal uh, to be able to turn that into metal. And as a result, you know, a lot of the nickel that comes out, out of there has a 50 to 80 ton CO2 footprint per ton of nickel. So, you know, that's not the kind of nickel that you want to use in an electric vehicle if you want to decarbonize the planet. The other big issue is if you're a North American or European car maker, you know, you basically bet your business that by 2030 or 2035 or 2040, you're going to be a, uh, an all electric car manufacturer. Well, you know, you don't want to end up, you know, betting your company and depending on Chinese controlled supply, you know, from Indonesia. You know, the, the world got a wake up lesson with the, with the Ukraine war, you mm -hmm. know, and the impact that we've had on, on gas prices. The reality is right now, Indonesia, and if you throw in the Philippines or Russia or the Philippines and, and New Caledonia, those three countries alone control almost two thirds uh, of global nickel supply. To give you an idea of, of, of what the importance of that is, OPEC at its peak, you know, when it quadrupled yeah. oil prices, only had just over 50% of the market. You know, so, you know, those three countries have no issues, uh, you know, intervening in their mining sector. Those countries need cash. And so, you know, I think over the next three or five years, the temptation to do something along those lines uh, is going to happen. And, and we saw that uh, at the, the, one of the G20 meetings, the Indonesian uh, government approached Canada to say, hey, mm. why don't we create an ONEC, just like an OPEC. So. So, so clearly really important to have a Canadian supply yep. and your Crawford discovery um, has, is going to play a significant role in North American supply. Can you just give us an overview of that? Sure. So uh, in just under four years, we've delineated what's the fourth largest nickel resource, sulfide resource uh, globally. Uh, if that mine was built today and was fully ramped up, uh, we'd be the fifth largest nickel sulfide producer globally. So it's a really you know, large uh, source of nickel supply. Um, but, you know, more importantly, uh, these types of nickel deposits like we have is called ultramafic. Uh, the host rock that hosts these nickel deposits are made up of minerals that spontaneously absorb CO2. So, um, you know, we're designing uh, into our process plant an ability to capture and store nearly 20 tons of carbon uh, for every ton of nickel that we produce. So we would be one of the largest carbon capture and storage facilities in Canada, um, in addition to be one of the largest nickel mines, nickel sulfide mines in the world. So we think that's a, that's a great combination. And we're really fortunate to be in a place like Timmins, that's an established mining camp. We have all of the major infrastructure that you need already in place, and 60,000 people who live in a number of communities nearby, you know, that are within an hour's drive of the mine site. So, you know, this is a, this is, this is a project that, you know, could get built. We're going through the permitting process now, and, and we think is going to be a critical source of supply for North American uh, car makers going forward. Interesting. And speaking of carbon capture, can you help us understand the benefits of nickel sulfites versus laterites? Yeah. So, so fundamentally, um, the way you have to process uh, a laterite deposit is you either need to use uh, a lot of electricity or you need to use a lot of acid to get get the materials out. Um, and, and when you're using a lot of electricity in a place like Indonesia, it's all coal-fired power. So that's why you know you end up with this 50 to 80 tons of, of CO2 
uh, footprint per ton of nickel produced. You know, in our case, where we are in Ontario, we have access to low carbon electricity uh, from the grid. Uh, so we can design a mining operation to have a very low carbon footprint to start with. And then, you know, we've got, again, these rocks that we're, you know, grinding up into very fine particles to be able to remove the nickel. And once those p particles are there and fine, we take advantage of it by, by injecting CO2 um, in, in, that, in that state. And, and you know, th these particles have to do this geochemically. Like, the, that's the beauty about this thing is if, if they see some CO2, they'll grab it and, and spontaneously convert themselves into this other mineral so that we can, you know, end, as I said, end up with a 20 ton uh, carbon credit uh, in terms of the amount of carbon that we can store per ton of nickel that we produce. And, and that's interesting because I know you talk about clean nickel versus dirty nickel and Indonesia, other third world countries and such can't do it in an ethical way. And if yep. we're going to mine nickel for this energy transition, you have to do it the right way. Yeah, no, that's, you know, I would encourage consumers to take a look at, you know, whatever electric vehicle that you're looking at and really understand where those raw materials uh, are coming from. Unfortunately, you know, there's a, a number of raw materials that go into a vehicle that, that come from, you know, whether it's Congo for cobalt, um, you know, Indonesia for nickel, where, yeah, you know, there's, there's some serious sort of ethical environmental, you know, uh, impacts um, that you're using from that nickel. So, you know, I encourage people to do their, <laughs> do their homework. And, and lastly here, I just want to ask you, do you think Canada has what it takes to become a global leader in nickel production? 100%, you know, the, the, the great thing is both the federal government uh, and, the, and a number of the provincial governments, you know, realize that we have this once in a generation opportunity, you know, to create an entire uh, new industrial supply chain. Uh, you know, Ontario is one of the few places that makes cars. You know, when you step back and look at global auto production, there really, you know, only are sort of 15 to 20 regions or countries in the world that make cars, and Ontario is one of them. Uh, the other key piece of the puzzle is Ontario is one of the few places in the world where you have lithium, nickel, cobalt, graphite, all the key ingredients that you need to make batteries. And so, you know, by being one of the few places in the planet where you, you know, can basically dig it out of the car, um, can do all the processing steps that you need, um, and then and put it in a vehicle, you know, could set us up, you know, again, for a big new industry, you know, that's going to help change the planet, um, you know, for 100 years. We just need to get moving and, and you know, so far, so good. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. That was Mark Selby, the CEO of Canada Nickel.